Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's get right into today's video. Before I get to the unboxing, I did want to go ahead and pop up a picture of the first five people to comment on my last video. You are all entered in my 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Do not forget that this giveaway does end on February 6th and until then, any video that I post, you want to try to be the first five comments. That way you can be entered to win. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump in to what I'm going to be unboxing in today's video. Double Dip Nails did send over their January surprise mystery box for me to unbox on my channel. I absolutely love these mystery boxes. I think they are super fun and I realized that I checked on the website looking for the mystery box and I couldn't find it. So I actually found a post from Double Dip Nails. I'll go ahead and pop that up on screen. But from the post, I think that they are closing Double Dip Nails. I am not 100% sure, but with me, what I read, I believe that is what ha what is happening. But I'll go ahead and pop that up on screen. That way, if you guys haven't saw that yet, you can go ahead and take a look and read it for yourself. But I'm not really sure what's going to happen yet other than the information that I read on the post. So I'm pretty sure they are having a closing sale for all of the Double Dip products. And which is the reason why there will not be any more of these mystery boxes. Again, I am not 100% sure on this. Do not quote me on it. But from reading that post, that is kind of what I'm piecing together and gathering. So I just wanted to let you guys know about that. But starting off with this unboxing here, we did have a insert card with some crinkle paper. And the first item here is this very pretty iridescent bag. You can use it for your makeup, your nail stuff, traveling. Pretty much there are so many different uses for that bag and it is a really nice and cute bag. The next item here are three stiletto swatch sticks and these are like the white natural color instead of them being clear and these are always included so that you can swatch your dip powders. I personally like to swatch my dip powders on square swatch sticks but of course these will come in handy when I'm swatching some gels. The next item included are some rhinestones and also a case. I don't know who would want to sort these into a case. I definitely don't have the time or patience for that. It would take forever, but it is nice that they do include the case in case you do want to sort these out by size because we do have a various of sizes in here. They are flat back and they are a B. So you definitely could use this case for the rhinestones or you could find another use for it if you have other charms laying around that you just want to store away. For the next little package here, this is kind of like a manicure kit or set. We have a dust brush, which is great for dip powder. I have so many dust brushes, but... I am frequently using them, so it's great to have a lot. We also had a wooden stick and also a little hand file or an emery board since it is a little bit thinner and smaller. But the brush is great for dip powder, brushing away any of your dust. And then the file would be great for some jelly tips, filing your dip powder application. And the wooden stick here has so many different uses. You can use it to push back your cuticles or clean up the dip powder around your cuticle. The next item here is a bag of heart sequins or glitters. These are so pretty. I love that they have like pastel colors. Just a big bag. This bag is like the size of my hand and it is full. This can be used in glitter mixes, custom acrylics, dip powders, or you can just use them to encapsulate. So many different uses for these as well. They have a very pretty iridescent reflect to them and they are very, very cute. Perfect for Valentine's Day or if you just want to add some colorful hearts to your manicures, they would be great for that as well. The next item are some more um, sequins or glitters. I usually call these sequins just because they're like shaped, but whatever you want to call them, these are kind of like a rose gold and like a light pink color. 
I really like these. I don't have anything like them either, so it was nice to get this in the box. There are some butterflies, hearts, flowers, um, just a bunch of different things. I think one of them's like a bunny, maybe supposed to be a bunny, but um, these are the very thin sequins, so they are bendable. If you want to bend them, you can use these for encapsulation. Again, you can use them for custom glitter acrylics or whatever you want to use them for. They were very pretty. The next item are some eyebrow scissors, and I think this was a little bit weird to be included in a nail box, but maybe it was just like a bonus little gift or something like that. I personally don't know if I would trust myself to trim my own eyebrows, so I did go ahead and keep these in the package just in case I did want to include them in a future giveaway. But they these are 4 inch blade eyebrow scissors and honestly I don't think I'll ever use them so they will probably be included in a giveaway. The next item is a cuticle oil in their new and improved packaging. So I'm not 100% sure if they're going to like keep the Bellavina products and just get rid of the double dip products. I really am not 100% sure about that. So please forgive me for not giving a correct or good answer to that. But just I'm letting you guys know as much as I know as the time is right now. The next item is this little bottle. These are great. I do have a smaller one of these, so it's nice to have a larger one. That way it can hold more alcohol in it. And you can just take your lint-free wipe, push it down, the liquid gets on it, and then you can use it to brush off or clean your nails. The next item here is a glitter mix, and this does not have any powder in it. It is just a raw glitter super beautiful. I love the like teal, pink, blue, and gold vibe and for some reason I was definitely getting like Easter maybe because like the pastel. I just thought this was a very pretty glitter mix. You can add this into some clear dip powder or acrylic powder to make your own little custom acrylic or dip. And for the last items included in the January mystery box, we have five dip powders. Usually in these boxes, there are only three dip powders, so I was surprised with this, but after seeing that post, I thought maybe they included a couple extra just because they are having a closing out sale. The first one here, I did not catch the name, but you could see the bottom of it. I think it may have said Pink Poodle. I'm not 100% sure, but it is a very pretty kind of like a neon hot pink. It has some fine glitters in it. I personally really prefer the dip powders with fine glitter instead of chunkier glitter. So this one was one of my favorites out of the five I will also be swatching these colors. I did go ahead and do that off camera, but I will show the swatch sticks after I am finished showing the colors. The next one here is the mystery color for the month of January. And I was so sad that these did not come sealed. To avoid making a huge mess like I did, you can place a piece of paper underneath and then open the dip powder and then you will be able to catch all of the glitters and then just go ahead and dump it right back into the container because I can know that it can be super frustrating if you did purchase this and it didn't come with a seal and you just had a huge mess. So just go ahead and keep that in mind for when you are opening these dip powders. For some reason, they no longer have this seals on them like they used to so that is pretty sad but it's okay I didn't race waste much just a little bit of glitter this one did have a mix of the finer and chunkier glitters I really personally don't like to work with those ones just because I find it super hard working with a dip powder with chunky glitter in it but don't forget these are two-in-one powder so you can also use them as acrylic which I feel would be a lot easier to do with the ones that have the chunkier glitter pieces like this one here. Both of these ones were absolutely gorgeous. I loved the glitters. I loved how the first one was iridescent and then this one was kind of giving a little bit of iridescent but also holographic at the same time and I thought those glitters were so stunning. You can also sift out your dip powders to sift out the glitters. That can be really helpful. I did try that nail hack a while back in another one of my videos. You can check that out if you're interested. 
The next dip powder here is a very pretty blue glitter mix with some chunkier iridescent glitters in it. I think this one is very beautiful as well. This one and this one also is in different containers than the first three that I showed, but I think they're all the same size. I just think it's a different container. And this last one here is just a very nice light pink shade. This one is the one I ended up using in today's nail set. Here are the swatches of the five dip powders. The last one on the far right does actually have some heart sequins in it, so that would be perfect for a Valentine's manicure. Don't forget, these can be used as dip and acrylic powder. I also do want to mention that with the closing sale, I am pretty sure that they are probably going to have very reduced and low prices. I do also have a discount code, which is Brandy20, and that can save you 20% off your purchase. So if you do want to pick anything up, this is probably your last chance, so I would recommend doing so. But let's go ahead and just jump right into the nail set. I really loved the January mystery box, and it does make me very, very upset to hear this sad news about the closing sale and the double dip products are no longer going to be available to purchase. But let's go ahead and just continue here and do some fun Valentine's Day themed Gel X nails with a dip powder overlay. So let's go ahead and start out with some quick nail prep. I am taking a cuticle pusher and I am gently going to push back my cuticles. This is a very important step when you are doing Gel X nails or just any type of nails because you do want to make sure you remove any of that dead cuticle from your nail plate. I am then going in with a buffer to remove the shine from my natural nail. You do not want to file and thin out your natural nail. This step is just removing the shine. So do not go crazy. Do not like file a lot. You don't want to do this to thin out your nails. You just want to remove that shine so that your nail plate doesn't have a shiny surface. You can also do this with a fine grit sanding band in an e-file, but because I'm just doing it for educational purposes, I did decide to just use a buffer because it is a little bit quicker and easier for me. I also have a little bit more control when I decide to use a buffer instead. After I was all finished with the filing, I'm just taking the dust brush that was included in the mystery box and I removed all of the nail dust. I'm also going to be using the Bellavina Premium Jelly Liquids. I really love these liquids. I'm starting off with the Protein Bond, which is basically the dehydrator, and I am going to be applying a thin coat of this to all of the nails, and that will dehydrate my natural nail plate to remove any natural oils. After that has fully air dried, I'm now taking the adhesive primer and I'm going to also apply a thin layer of this to all of the nails to prime my nails so that the nail tips bond better to my natural nail plate. If you are struggling with lifting, I would recommend applying two coats of the adhesive primer because that can really help a lot, so I recommend trying that out. After the adhesive primer was fully dried, I am now taking the Bellavina base coat and I am going to be applying a layer of this to all of the nails and curing for 30 seconds in my nail lamp. After that base coat was cured, here are how the nails were looking, all prepped and ready. I decided to use the long coffin jelly tips. These are from Bella Vina. I believe these are no longer available on the website and that's super sad because I actually really like these and I totally would stock up on them if they were still available. But I just went ahead and sized out my nail tips off camera. I'm going to be using this solid press on gel. This was actually included in one of the Double Dip Nails mystery boxes, and I'm also using the Bellavina Mini Lamp. I really love this solid glue gel. I also wish it was available on the website. It just makes your gel extensions application so, so much easier. You can literally apply all of the nail tips. They will stay in place, and you can just do one full cure. 
Personally, I'm a little bit clumsy, so I do like to go in with a quick little flash cure of about 10 to 15 seconds just to help them stay in place. But all I did was just took the nail tip and scooped out a little bit of that solid glue gel and I placed that into the nail tip using my glove to press it down a little bit. You do want to try to avoid touching this product with your hands just because touching uncured gels can cause an allergic reaction. So it is important to wear a glove or just use a different tool to help press the product down. Then I just went ahead and placed the nail tip on my natural nail just like I would a normal regular gel X application. And it's so much easier. If you have a little bit of product squeeze out, you don't have to worry at all. You can use your fingers. You can use a wooden stick just to clean that up before you go into cure and your nail tip will stay in place. Another good thing is you do not have to hold your nail tip in place under the nail lamp. Of course, you can do so if you think you're going to move a little bit and have it like move out of place but you do not have to hold it once you have that nail tip down and it's secure it will stay in place for you to be able to do your cure which is one thing that i really like about using solid glue gels usually i do take the little precaution of still holding the nail still doing a cure in between each but that is just because i'm clumsy and really not in a rush but if you are in a rush, want to get some quick nails, definitely choose to do this method using some solid glue gel. It is a time saver and it really can save you so much time. So as you can see, I am curing each nail. I did only leave it in the nail lamp for about 10 to 15 seconds. But once I had all of the nails applied, I did go ahead and go into my larger nail lamp and do a full cure of 30 seconds. So after the nail tips were applied and I was finished with the full cure of 30 seconds, here are how they are looking. Those last clips were in real time. I wanted to leave them like that just so you guys could see really how long the process was taking me to do. Recently, I've been trying my best to avoid speeding up most of the clips in my nail videos just so you guys can really see the real time and watching me work in a real time perspective. But after the nail tips were cured, we're now just going in with a little bit of filing. I took that hand file to file the free edge just to make it straight and crisp. I'm also going in with my professional e-file, which is also from Bellavina, along with a cuticle ball bit. My e-file is on a speed of around 4 to 5,000 RPMs, and I am just taking this gently around the cuticle area. You do not need to apply pressure when doing this. Basically, I am just taking it around to remove any spillage, which there wasn't much at all because I was able to clean it up in the process of applying the nail tips, but I am also doing this to help seal in the cuticle and really give it a clean, fresh look. I don't want these nails to look like press-on, so doing this helps out so much. If your gel -X application looks like you're wearing press-ons, I would recommend doing this. You can also use a hand file to do it as well. You do not need an e-file to do that. 
I also am taking my buffer and I am removing the shine from the surface of the nail tip. This is very important because with our dip powder application, you want to have a buffed and etched surface. You do not want a shiny surface, which will allow your dip powder to just pop right off. After I was finished, I did repeat that to all of the other nails and brushed away any of the remaining dust. I am going to be using this pretty in pink color. I really liked it and I thought it would fit a very cute Valentine's Day themed set. I'm also using the glue base and a cupcake liner just because these nails are a little bit longer and will not fit into the dip container to dip the nails. I also personally like to pour over the powder just because it helps with any wrinkling in my manicures and honestly to me I just think it leaves a cleaner finish. So after I apply that dip base I just went ahead and poured over the dip powder catching it in the cupcake liner and then before moving on to the next nail I did go ahead and quickly take that wooden stick and just clean up around the cuticle area. I have found a huge difference in how clean my cuticles look after taking a wooden stick and just cleaning up that any remaining dip powder that may be on my skin or around my cuticle. I just think it makes the nails look a lot cleaner and gives better results. So I then just repeat that with the rest of the nails. I'm keeping this application very simple and beginner friendly by just using one simple color and just going in with the same color on all of the nails. For all of the nails, I am only going to be doing two coats of color. If you do two coats and realize that your nails are breaking, you may need to apply more coats for your lifestyle. Sometimes our lifestyles are different and different things won't work for you. But because I'm popping these nails off and not actually leaving them on, I decided to just do two coats since two coats is generally where you can get that correct color opacity when you are using dip powder. If you find out that two coats isn't enough for you, maybe you can go in with three to four coats. If that isn't enough, I would recommend taking the build powder and going over top of that with maybe one to two coats. And when I say build powder, I'm just talking about the clear powder. It does have a little bit more strength than their colored uh, colored powders, so you can always try that as well. After I was finished with the first coat of dip powder, I went ahead and brushed away all of the remaining powder from the nails. And as you can see here, I am just quickly moving along to the second coat of dip powder. After I was finished with the second coat of dip powder, here are how the nails are looking. This pink color is so pretty to me. I really love it. I am now just taking that dust brush and removing all of the dust from the nails. This is very important when you are working with the dip liquids because you do not want to ruin them by leaving on any excess remaining powder. So make sure you are taking a dust brush and in between each coat of anything you're doing, removing all of that dust. After all of the dust was removed, I'm now just taking the activator and I am applying a very generous coat of this to all of the nails. The activator is what hardens slash cures the dip powder. It doesn't really need to be cured, but in a sense, the activator is hardening the dip powder as if you were to apply gel and cure it into the nail lamp. That is basically what the activator is doing to the dip powder nails. So you do want to make sure you apply a very generous coat of that. I went ahead and let that set up for about two to five minutes 
and now I am going in with the hand file. This was the one that was included in the mystery box and I had no problems using it. I feel like this one wouldn't be probably the best to use for a poly gel or maybe an acrylic nail set, but for these dip powder nails which need very minimal filing, it wasn't difficult to use this one at all. I cleaned up the shape, cleaned around the cuticle, and also to help smooth out the surface of the nails a little bit, I went ahead and took a buffer just to buff over the surface of the nails to really help smooth them out. This nail set needed very minimal filing. I didn't need to do much at all, especially because I already had those pre-shaped jelly tips. I went ahead and did the filing to all of the rest of the nails. I then just took my dust brush again and removed all of the nail dust. After the nail dust was all removed, I'm now taking my second coat of activator and just applying a very generous coat of this to all of the nails since I did file. And I just want to make sure that all of the layers of dip powder are activated and fully hardened. After that, we are now ready for some nail art. I pulled out some gel liners from Bellavina. The two pink ones here are from the Glow the Night collection, and then I believe the white one is from their Christmas collection. I'm not 100% sure the name on that, but if it is still available on the website, I will go ahead and link them down below in the description box. I 100% those recommend those gel liners, especially the glow ones. I just think the glow is so nice and it's also a very fun feature to add into your nails. So starting off on my middle finger, I am going to be creating some hearts. I'm using a dotting tool to create two dots on the nail like so and then just using the liner brush from the gel liner colored bottle. I am just filling that in and kind of creating a triangle to really make it look like a heart. These are the easiest ways I know how to make hearts and I think they always turn out looking so cute. I am going to be creating hearts with the darker pink shade and then also the lighter pink shade. After creating the hearts, I did go ahead and cure that into place for a 30 second cure. Now I'm taking that dotting tool again with some of the white gel polish. I added on some dots and then I'm just going to use the liner brush to create some four pointed stars. Basically, I just needed a space filler to help fill up the nail and just really pull everything together. These are very simple to do, very easy. You place a dot and then just from the center of that dot, you are pulling out four lines coming from the center of the dot. Very easy, simple to do. I went ahead and cured that in place for 30 seconds and then I pulled out another gel liner that I wanted to use. It was a very pretty silver holographic gel and I decided to use this just to create some dots and give a little bit of glitter into the nail set. I went ahead and cured that for 30 seconds in the nail lamp and then the ring finger is going to be the same exact thing as the middle finger here so I'm just going to go ahead and let this process play out. I really hope that you guys are enjoying the video. If you are, please make sure you subscribe to my channel, give the video a like, it really helps me out a lot, and if you're feeling generous, leave a comment below. I also want to say do not forget about my 10,000 subscriber giveaway. If you have not seen the video of everything that is included, I will have that linked up in the card so you can go check that out. It is a huge giveaway with a ton of products, so make sure if you do not know anything about that yet, check the description box and go watch that video after you're finished watching this one.
Moving on to my index and my pinky nail, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do for these two nails, so I just decided on something simple being a French tip on both of them, and then I will be adding on a pink heart charm towards the end of the video. For my thumb, I went ahead and did that off camera, but I just did the same exact thing as I did on my middle and ring finger to my thumb. And then I'm just going to finish off these two French tips, curing them for 30 seconds in the nail lamp. After curing the French tips, that was all of the nail art I was going to be doing. So I am just taking the Bellavina non-wipe top coat and applying this to all of the nails and curing for 30 seconds in the nail lamp. After that was cured, I just pulled out some super cute little light pink charms. They're like kind of like a rhinestone. And I am just going to be taking one of those for each of the French tip nails using some gel and I'm just going to apply them to the smile line area of the French tip. I went ahead and cured those for 30 seconds in the nail lamp and then I will be coming back to apply my cuticle oil. After curing on those rhinestones, I'm now going to be applying the cuticle oil using the one that was included in the mystery box, applying that to my cuticles to nourish them, and of course, like I always say, top off the nail set. I really loved the finished look of these nails. They were very simple, classy, and just so cute. I really loved them. I loved the light pink base dip powder color. I think that one was very pretty and also with the gel liners. I actually did forget that these glow in the dark so I didn't get any shots of them glowing but trust me the glow is very beautiful. It definitely lights up super bright. But here are the finished nails. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I am very sad to hear the news about double dip nails. Um, I think that is very sad. I love working with their products and just overall using and collecting their products. So it is very, very sad to hear that. Definitely don't miss out on their closing sale if you do want to pick up a couple of items before they officially close. So I will be trying my best to link any of the products down below in the description box if they are available. Also, don't forget, I do have that discount code BRANDY20 that you can use to save 20% off the site. But as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Mm -hmm.